ITEL is one of the most popular budget devices on the market. And this device right here is one of the biggest upgrades they've done yet. So let's talk about it. This is the ITEL S23 Plus and here's my review of it. Starting off with the unboxing. The unboxing experience is honestly one of the best I've seen so far. It comes in this big box. When you open it, you'll see that it's divided into these three sections. And you can see it looks very premium and it's written breakthrough without limits. Well, we'll see what that means later in the video. You get a free case in this little box, which is always nice. Then down below, you'll get the phone in this elemental blue color. You get a SIM ejector tool, and inside you get a pair of wired earphones, which connect via Type-C. And then finally, you get a Type-C charging cable. And once again, there's no charging brick which is sad. So first, let's talk about the design. It's a big redesign on how iTel phones usually look. Starting off with the screen, it has a curved edge screen. It is also an AMOLED panel. And this curved edge design is what you usually see in mostly flagships like the Samsung S series. And at this price point, it's pretty hard to find a phone with uh, this kind of design. So that is something really good about them. It also has a resolution of 1080 by 2400 pixels with a peak brightness of 500 nits. It also has an in-display fingerprint sensor, which is nice and you don't usually see uh, phones at this price point usually having it. Most of the time it's usually sound mounted or just right here at the back. So from my usage, uh, the display has been nice. In the sun, uh, this is how you can expect the display to look. It is not that bright as it is only 500 nits, but it being an AMOLED panel helps it a lot and you'll not struggle to see stuff on the screen. However, when using it indoors or in normal conditions, this is how it looks and it honestly looks amazing. The screen is also Gorilla Glass 5, which means it is durable. Then looking at the back, I really love this element of blue color. Especially when it's against the sun, it looks really nice. And it has the triple back setup. And these aren't actually three cameras. There's just one main camera, a flashlight, and a depth sensor. We'll talk about the cameras later, but I must mention that holding this phone uh, just feels really nice. It has a really good build. It doesn't feel cheap. And if I just put this on your desk and just assemble it randomly, uh, just off how the display looks, uh, since it's a curved edge display, uh, nobody's going to say that this is an entry level phone. Most of the time you'll guess that, it, that it's a flagship. So I really love how it looks and the design and the build quality. Let's talk about performance. So this comes with 4 GB of RAM, uh, expandable to 8 GB uh, of virtual RAM. Uh, it also has the Unison Tiger T16 12 nanometer processor, which is a 2020 processor, uh, mostly found in mid-ranger phones. And when I saw it being used in this phone, I wasn't surprised. And I can say it does the job pretty well. Opening apps is pretty quick. It is also just 60 hertz, uh, but when scrolling it is smooth and it doesn't feel laggy. I remember early in the year reviewing the ITEL A60 and that phone was rated 60 hertz, but due to the processor, it just felt really laggy. But I do understand that that phone is in a different price point, uh, just under 10,000 shillings. And the difference is like day and night between the two phones. I even tried gaming on it and it has been great. Uh, I usually try to use games uh, that involve a lot of swiping and motion. So I was using Subway Surfers and even playing for over 30 minutes, the performance was good. And the phone having a really good AMOLED panel and it being responsive, it just makes the experience look good. I also ran some benchmark scores using Geekbench 6 and the performance was good. Uh, the results I got, uh, I was pretty satisfied with it, especially at this price point. I co even compared it to my Redmi Note 12, which is usually my main Android device. And the phone is 5,000 shillings more. And looking at the single core performance, uh, you can see that it was almost uh, just reaching uh, the Redmi Note 12 performance. But looking at the multi-core performance, uh, the Redmi was 100 points higher. So uh, at this price point and it being cheaper, I really love the results from this. So if your phone uses is just communication, social media, and uh, consuming media, uh, this phone will be good for you and performance will not be an issue. However, there's a day I pushed it to the limits uh, where I was using it to make some Instagram stories and I was using it for like an hour, an hour and a half straight and then something weird happened. So it just randomly turned off and whenever I tried unlocking it using the fingerprint, uh, fingerprint sensor, it just couldn't. Uh, I tried even using the passcode and it just couldn't go through and even the phone was a bit heated up so it was weird and i just had to reboot the device for it to work again so because i couldn't get inside the phone 
this hasn't happened again i do not know if it was because uh, i was overloading it or i was using it for too long but that hasn't happened again so that is just something i wanted you to know now let's talk about the camera so this has a 50 megapixel main camera and the selfie camera is 32 megapixels so inside the camera app there are quite a few features like super night shot beauty short video which just takes 15 second videos and even this ar shot which gives you uh, some interesting and funny filters so by default the phone doesn't take 50 megapixel photo you actually have to go all the way uh, and enable uh, ultra hd and that is why it will take the full 50 megapixel photo and using the picture i took uh, inside this room it looks really nice I, I think with some good lighting you can get some really nice shots if you zoom in you can see that the details there on my face on my hair using this picture that i took from outside i uh, can see that uh, the detail is there if you zoom in and i was actually comparing it to a 12 megapixel photo i took on my iphone and if you look at the rails uh, on these photos uh, you can see that it is clearer on the 50 megapixel photo than on the 12 megapixel photo so it captures the detail and with good lighting you can get some really nice shots and i love the ai scene detection that it has which are just the settings depending on the scene to produce the best results so if i take pictures of like a plant or outside it's able to adjust the saturation differently and make uh, make it uh, make the photo just appear better however when the lighting is a bit low or when you're not accessing natural lighting uh, the photos are uh, start to struggle a little bit and i'll talk about it later in the video so next up let's talk about the portrait mode the portrait pictures also look good uh it does a good job with the edge detection and if you're looking to just uh, capture a good portrait photo of somebody it does a good job however when you're going to take portrait photos of other things apart from people uh it begins to struggle a little bit identifying with the object because once you have somebody standing there it immediately identifies the person and blasts the background however using these pictures as an example Yes, the background is a bit blurred, but it, it really struggled to identify the object uh, on first on the, during the first time, and I needed to refocus it uh, to to the object uh, quite a few times for me to get that shot. But once it has identified uh, the object, it's going to capture it well. But I believe it can do better with a little bit of more background blur. And then we have the super night mode feature. Now uh, I didn't expect much results from this, uh, so going uh, going into the night trying to test this, I didn't have much faith in it. So what happens is that when you go and take a photo, uh, originally the photo that you're going to see there doesn't really look nice, uh, it's all dark and then it's going to capture uh, the photo by a few seconds, between 5 to 10 seconds there. But once it is done, uh, the difference is like, the difference is so much. There are obviously things that aren't perfect, like uh, you can see the sky is a bit green and capturing people using this feature doesn't really appear well. Uh, just using as a reference, uh, this is the same picture I took with the iPhone 13 Pro and you can see that there's still a long way to go. Now let's talk about the videos. So the back camera can record uh, up to 1080 30fps and this is how the video quality looks like. Honestly when outside I love how it does and it does a good job with the HDR. So this is what you can expect uh, from the video and this is also how the audio quality sound like. Uh, tell me what you think about it. And so with some good lighting, you can see that uh, it's going to do the job. It is a bit noisy outside and this is how the sound quality sounds like. Uh, I'm pretty sure the, the noise is annoying, but this is what you can expect if, are, if you are going to be, let's say, vlogging outside. So now let's talk about the selfie camera. As I mentioned, these are that 2 megapixel selfie camera. And once again, it doesn't take uh, that 2 megapixel photos by default. You actually have to go to the settings and um, enable the ultra ultra HD mode. And that is where you're going to capture the that 2 megapixel photos. And here are some selfies that I took with it. But what I don't like about the selfie camera is that you can't really focus on a subject and it doesn't have HDR. So if you're going to be taking a picture of you and you have uh, the sky as the background, you're going to see that the sky is going to be washed out and it's going to appear as white uh, and it's supposed to be blue. And just looking at this selfie side by side, uh, this one was taken with the back camera and this one was taken with the front camera. And you can see that uh, using the back camera, the HDR is there and you can be able to see that the sky is blue. And on this other photo taken with the selfie camera, the photos in the background just uh, the sky in the background just appears to be white and even the portrait mode uh, just works pretty good i also believe it can do a bit better uh, with the edge detection uh, because if you look at uh, some some of the bits in my hair uh, around the head uh, the the edge detection is not uh, as sharp the video quality is also up to 1080 30 fps 
So this is how you can expect the video quality to look like. Also, this is the audio quality uh, using the selfie camera. So tell me what you think. And yeah. So now let's talk about the software. So out of the box, this comes with Android 13, which is good, and ITEL OS uh, version 13. So the ITEL OS is really, really similar to iOS, which is found in Technophones. And if you were to ask somebody who is familiar with Technophones, what this phone was, uh, just uh, looking at some of the f software features, like just looking at the settings up, uh, this is just so similar to the Technophones. Uh, some other apps here, like um, like Visual Player that are here, uh, the Palm Store, just a lot of things uh, really look like iOS from Techno. And I'm not surprised because it's a transient phone and they are all under like kind of the same company. But this is not an issue at all because I believe iOS has some really nice software features that are exclusive to them and I uh, feel like uh, they, they are good. For example, things like peak mode uh, which allow you to view a message and the other person won't see that um, the message has, has been viewed. Uh, things like the sticker maker, uh, an inbuilt uh, WhatsApp status uh, server, and just a lot more things. Uh, even the the Visa Player it has a lot of features, uh, a lot of features in them. If you want a dedicated video about uh, the iOS features, uh, you can leave it in the comment section. But yeah, the software the software is good. There are also a lot of um, similar features which you've seen uh, on other devices, like for example the dynamic bar. So this is kind of like the dynamic island from the iPhone 14 Pro series. And this mostly appears uh, if you're using face unlock. Uh, if you're charging, uh, the charging animation is going to appear at the top. But uh, when using it uh, for things like uh, live activities that are actually on the iPhone 14 and 15 Pros, uh, it is not there. But what I do not like about the software is uh, some of the apps uh, that you're going to be using, like let's say Visual Player, as Palm Store, they have a lot of ads in them. But at this price point, uh, that is what makes these phones affordable and this is how they make money. So now let's talk about the battery life of this device. So I'm going to play some clips of a day where I was daily driving it and I was giving the update on the battery life. So it's currently 11.41 a.m. And as you can see, the phone is at 98%. It is now 3.41 p.m. Uh, I've been using it uh, on my social medias uh, pretty much the whole day. Uh, and it's now at 78%. Yeah, there you go, 78%. So as you have seen, it's pretty hard to kill the battery on this device. And uh, if you're just going to be using this uh, for social media and just doing everything, you're going to take about two days for you to drain this battery. It's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and it also charges at a good speed. Uh, it's not the fastest, uh, 18 watts. Which, uh, which is okay. And as I mentioned, it has the charging animation that appears at the dynamic bar. And at this price point, I do not expect uh, the phone to have wireless charging, which it doesn't. So if you're going to be expecting that, uh, that will not be here. So overall, uh, for 22,400 shillings, I can totally recommend this phone. Uh, I feel like if you look at the competition at that price point, uh, this goes head to head with the, with, uh, with the other phones. And things like uh, the curved AMOLED display, the build quality just make this make this device stand out and i really like it so i've put a link in the description if you're interested in buying it uh, i would advise you to follow me on my tiktok and mainly instagram because i'll be giving updates on uh, anything new i find about this device if you want to know anything you can leave a comment or you can just message me on my instagram account duncans underscore tech and both on my Instagram and TikTok platforms, I upload every day. So when you follow me there, you're you expected to see a lot more content from there. But if you enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to subscribe for more future reviews. I advise you to check out this video if you're interested in uh, some good premium earbuds at an affordable price.